okay? Guys, I'm going on a date. With God. <laughs> okay. I'm going on a date with God, and I want to take you with me because I think this is going to be an experience. I want to share it with you. What I mean by a date is I mean being in my Bible, worshiping, literally talking to God, being present. I feel kind of gross. I haven't really gone out recently. Like, I haven't gone on a date. I'm ne actually, I've never gone on a date, but it's okay. It's okay, we have a lot of time for that. I feel like I am definitely in a season of singleness. I am in a season right now of falling in love with God. So I was like, oh, let's just go on a date, God. And this isn't weird. I don't want you to think it's weird. I'm going to get ready, do my hair, my makeup, put on a nice outfit. That's all for me though. God calls us to come as we are. Um, you don't have to be perfect to come to God. You don't need to dress up to go to God. He just wants you to be there, be present, and run into his arms. That's literally it. I just wanted to say that God does call us to come as we are, but he does not call us to stay as we are. There are actually no Bible verses that say, come as you are. There are Bible verses that do say, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So I think it's that idea of coming to God, acknowledging your sin problem, acknowledging who Jesus is, and being willing to be transformed because when you are in Jesus Christ, you are not supposed to say the same. God has open arms to us, but he does not accept everything. Yeah, and so it's our responsibility to dive into the Bible and understand and learn um, what is acceptable to God and what his commandments are. 1 John 1.9 if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it's kind of that same idea, but yeah. While I'm doing my makeup, we're gonna chat. <laughs> this whole like concept of like falling in love with God came to me because of my friend Grace. I told her I was struggling to read my Bible in the morning and actually really enjoy it. I wasn't really excited to spend time with God. And she was saying that something that helped her was thinking about her Bible time or her quiet time as a date with God. So you wouldn't check your phone when you're on a date, so don't do it when you're in his word. You wouldn't make excuses and cancel on your date, so don't do it with God. It's just a whole different mindset that completely blew my mind. And it just got me into this mindset of like, wait, have I fallen in love with God yet? Because I cannot fall in love with anyone else until I completely fall in love with God. And it's kind of difficult. Like, I don't know if you grew up in the church or not, but it's kind of like, oh yeah, I've always been around God. I know what he's done for me. I know what I need to do. I know how to be faithful to God. I know how to do that. But it's like taking a step back from that. Am I truly in love with God? I was like, oh no. I learned like, I'm not really in love with God right now. Of course, like I love him, but I want to love him on a whole different level right now. Like, especially if you think about dating someone, and if you think about how much time it takes to talk to that person and how you really get to know that person, like imagine if you were talking to someone and if you were dating someone and you know, you spend a lot of time FaceTiming them, um, hanging out with them. Like imagine if you spent that much time with God and you, you literally acted like you were dating God. What? Especially now that we've placed dating and marriage so ultimate in our culture and society, like, Oh, you don't have a boyfriend? Oh, look, he's cute. Go get a boyfriend. Like, I don't know. It's kind of all pointing in the direction of like getting married. Are we really making marriage ultimate? Because the reality is what should be ultimate is sharing Jesus with people and sharing his love and going to heaven. I don't know. It's kind of like this pressure that society places on you and you don't even realize it. Like all the couple TikToks, all the songs about love, that makes its way to your heart. It really does. That's kind of scary. <laughs> I think so often we try to rush out of the season that we're in and we don't try to enjoy it. <laughs> Singleness is such a gift. A podcast I recently listened to and it really helped me to like get my myself together like realizing like we have this beautiful gift of time and we don't have to always try to be I don't know serving someone else like the way that Paul describes Singleness versus marriage is spoken about really well in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 
32 through 35 and this is what he says i want you to be free from anxieties the unmarried man is anxious about the things of the lord how to please the lord but the married man is anxious about worldly things how to please his wife his interests are divided and the unmarried or bethrowed woman is anxious about the things of the lord how to be holy in body and spirit but the married woman is anxious about worldly things how to please her husband i say this for your own benefit not to lay any restra restraint upon you but to promote good order and secure your undivided devotion to the lord so when we have a season of singleness, we need to take that and run. Not that marriage is bad or I don't know. I've been praying a lot for my channel and my video and that God would help me with my words. So hopefully, I don't know, he's speaking to someone right now. If we also go to Ephesians 5 verses 25 through 27. Okay, this is what the Bible says about marriage. One of the things it says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, and it goes on and on and on. Marriage is a big commitment. I think as single people, sometimes we just think, Oh, marriage is easy. It's beautiful. It's like it's a serious thing and maybe you are single right now and maybe you're frustrated with that Go on dates with God Guys, I am so excited for what God is doing in this generation I just feel the revival if you need to get off of TikTok and Instagram and stop looking at these couples And that's what you need to do because let me just tell you we need to feed our heart with God because if we do not fill our heart with the things of God it's gonna want what you feed it. So I've mentioned this before, if you're listening to songs about dating and relationships and the chase and sex, that's what you're gonna want. Like deep down in your heart, it's, something's gonna be buried in there. I'm pretty sure it's in Proverbs, that's why it says, guard your heart above all else for everything you do flows from it. In that podcast that I shared with you, the main speaker, his name is uh, JP, I think, he was saying how it takes him about 16 hours to plan a sermon. 16 hours, okay. And he got married pretty young and he met his wife young and that's great, like everyone has a different story. God has a different plan for everyone. But his friend who was single and really dove into his singleness, now it takes him one hour to prepare a sermon because the Bible is so hidden in his heart and he took that time when he was single and he used it and what is god gonna do with that amazing thing so i don't know i feel like we all have this little gift of singleness but what are we gonna do with it also if it helps you to think about it like this right now god might be shaping you into the wife or the husband that your spouse needs you to be the, like if we have not completely fallen in love with god and treasured up his commandments and learned to love it we we're not going to be able to love our spouse in the correct way we we just won't be able to god is just preparing up an army let me just say if satan cannot discourage you he will distract you come into your life they're not christian you know it's not from god just remember, Satan, if he cannot discourage you, and if he cannot make you doubt so much that you stop reading the Bible, if he can't do anything else, he will distract you. he will make you so busy you don't have time for the word anymore. Just saying. I just feel like right now, we're all like figuring Satan out a little bit more, and he's just like, oh no, they figured out my tricks. <laughs> also, if there's that person in your life that you want to date, but you know it's not the right time, just remember. It's, it might happen. <laughs> Honestly, I'm really tired. I have an assignment in like two hours. It's two. So I'm excited for you and me. Isn't that such a beautiful concept though, falling in love with God? That's just perfect. If you are struggling over a breakup or you just need some guidance in terms of relationships, Crush is such a good book. I read it last year or two years ago and I made so many notes. I'm doing a face mask right now, but I wanted to share with you this book. Uh, it's really good. I think I'm halfway through with it. And that was because instead of going on my phone and like social media, I've been reading and this book provides like really, really good guidance for like what a godly relationship should look like. I think it is really good to prepare and know what a godly relationship should look like. 
before you enter one yeah okay isn't it amazing and crazy how we're gonna go on dates with god right but he's never gonna cancel on you so if we just take a step back and look at the bigger picture which also is really represented in this book if you have a boyfriend right now you guys are probably gonna break up if you get married eventually one of you will die the main goal is just going to heaven and sharing god's love let's rewire our brains here from what society has tried to tell us okay makeup is ready let's go get a good outfit on oh look and suddenly her skin is clear okay well i got my boys with me okay listen i've been waiting to wear this shirt this is the before we took it a little uh, extreme this is from urban outfitters the belt is from forever 21 these are from levi's and then i don't even know why i'm wearing these shoes it's winter it's snowing outside but i just want it to be summer these are from DSW, and now it's time for hair. Oh gosh. I'm gonna curl my hair a little bit because it's wavy. It needs a little touch up, you know what I mean? You yeah. see her walking down the boulevard. She got the posture of a superstar. Here's the final thing. The curls look so tiny. I just worshiped a little bit. It felt really good to do that and pray a little bit. So I think I'm gonna read a little bit of Genesis and then I have my um, precepts, which is like a Bible study I'm doing and we're in Romans. What's on the show? What's under the subtle smile? We'll never know. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's dining up to I finished my day and I've changed already. In precepts, we're learning about the law and like people abusing God's grace. Should you have a date with God? Yes or no? My answer is yes. I'd recommend this because it shows God how serious you are about a relationship with him and set aside some time. Like you don't have to get ready, but to kind of call it a date. Chick-fil-A day. Do you want to order or should I order? All right, I guess we're ordering Chick-fil-A, guys. Carbon words faithfulness. <laughs> yeah, let me just pray for you before you leave. God, I just thank you for this person watching. I just pray that you would bless them and that you would just set a fire down in their soul that is not temporary, that will not burn out. I pray against anything that Satan is trying to do. God, I just thank you because you know their heart. You know what they're struggling with right now. And I just pray for healing. I pray for... Um, restoration and for a greater desire to know you in Jesus' name, amen. I'm gonna go order my chocolate. Have a good one. <laughs> okay, bye.